Hoppity Goes to Town. Today's story is about a cheeky, imaginative, and very adventurous little kangaroo called Hoppity. Hoppity was a tiny grey kangaroo who lived in the Australian bush. He lived with mummy and daddy grey kangaroo in a little clearing next to a big clear lake called the Jelly Bean Pool. The little clearing was a lovely place to live with cool water close by and many bushes and shrubs to eat. The grey kangaroo family lived very happily for many years in their little home hidden amongst the trees until one day when Hoppity had an amazing dream that changed his life. Hoppity dreamt that they were going to have to move. A big, mean man had bought the land and wanted to sell it off piece by piece to make lots of money. The grey kangaroo family were shocked when they heard the news. They didn't know what to do. They couldn't move because the little clearing had always been their home and they didn't know where they would go. Also, they didn't want to lose all their bushland friends. What to do? What to do? They thought. Little Hoppity dreamt that he took control of the situation and decided to call the general meeting of all bushland creatures in the area. Hopefully between them, somebody would have a plan. Little Hoppity set a date for the meeting to be held the following week under the big blue gum on the left side of the clearing. He posted notices all around the area so everyone would come to the important meeting. On the third night of the following week, as the full moon shone brightly, the bushland creatures gathered to discuss the futures of their homes. There were possums, snakes, echidnas, wombats, wallabies, insects, and even the kookaburras and currawongs came along to join the grey kangaroo family in their search for a plan of action. Bang, 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 went brave little Hoppity as he slapped his tail on the ground to get the crowd's attention. We are gathered here today, he began, to discuss the future of our wonderful bushland homes. As some of you may have heard, a greedy man wants to take our homes away and we will be forced to move to another part of the bush. We'll have to work out today what we should do. Should we fight him and save our homes? Or should we just plan to move away? But he finished and left the crowd gasping. Many of them hadn't heard the awful news and some of the older mammals fainted with the shock of it all. Everyone was murmuring and helping those up that had fallen. The talking grew louder and louder until small arguments started breaking out all through the crowd. The noise got so loud that people began shouting and arguments turned to fights. Order, shouted Daddy Kangaroo, but the noise continued. Order, I said, Hoppity shouted. What's the meaning of this? He continued. What is going on? Finally, there was silence. The shouting had ceased. Would one of you please tell me what's going on? Hoppity asked again. No one answered. They all looked away. Okay then, you, said brave little Hoppity, pointing to a little brown wallaby. What is this all about? Finally, the shy brown wallaby spoke up. Well, sir, he began rather formally. It, it, it's just that some of us believe we should stand up and fight, and, and others think we should just leave before we get hurt. Hmm, I see, said Hoppity wisely. But what do you think, little brown wallaby? He asked. Well, well actually, sir, uh, I'd like to fight. Fight for my home, but none of us know how to fight. Humans... Mm, they never listen to us. Yes, I understand, said Hoppity. Does anyone else feel the same way? They'd like to fight, but they don't know how? 
Hoppity asked. Yes, yes, responded the crowd. I do not want to fight, came a lone voice from the animals. I am very old and cannot find the strength to fight. Me neither, me neither, me neither, three voices agreed. Okay, said Hoppity. So the majority of you want to fight? Yes, we do, we do. But what do we do? Do we fight them? Answered the crowd. We will work out a plan in a minute. In the meantime, we must accept that the old creatures do not have to fight and therefore may go home and rest, said Hoppity. Okay, we understand, agreed the crowd. So all the old mammals, reptiles and birds hobbled and glided back to their homes. The ones we have left here must now help me decide how we will keep our homes, said Hoppity in a brave voice. Everyone threw in different ideas, but none seemed good enough to actually work. The humans appeared so much more intelligent and strong than the bushland creatures, and they felt lost and didn't think that anyone or any idea would save them. Finally, little Hoppity called the meeting to an end, told everyone to go home and think about the problem and come back the next week to discuss new ideas. All the bushland creatures headed home exhausted and confused. For the next week before the second meeting, the animals talked about their ideas with their families. Many of the ideas would never work. By the time of the second meeting, many ideas had come and gone and few were left that might work. The animals and birds gathered together under the great blue gum for a second time. Hoppity once again called the meeting to order. <coughs> Today we shall decide what to do about our homes and I have called the fish to gather in the jelly bean pool beside us for their homes are also in danger. Little Hoppity continued. We have among us birds, mammals, reptiles and fish, so we may fight by water, air and on the ground, and possibly underground as well. Now, will everyone put forth their plans? The meeting went for hours, but finally, in the wee hours of the morning, everyone agreed to carry out Wombat's complex plan to scare the big mean man and Hoppity had been chosen to lead the bushland creatures as he had been voted the bravest of them all. Hoppity woke with a start, expected to hear the bushland creatures buzzing around and planning to stop the mean man from taking over their homes. He was all excited and his heart was racing. He looked around the dimly lit clearing, only to find that most of the other bushland animals were still sleeping and those that were awake were looking in no hurry to go anywhere. What's going on here? Aren't we supposed to be preparing for a big fight? Hoppity thought to himself. He turned to Mummy Grey Kangaroo, but before he could say anything, his mother said, Good morning, Hoppity. You're looking very hot. Have you had an exciting dream, sweetheart? Hoppity took another look around him. Is this true? Has this all been a dream? He looked at his father, who seemed more interested in soaking up the morning sun than organising to help Hoppity lead a fight. Finally, Hoppity looked back at his mother and asked, Are we going to have to move? Is the big bad greedy man going to take our homes away? What are you talking about, Hoppity? Our home is quite safe and there is definitely no big bad greedy man. What a cheeky, imaginative little thing you are, laughed Mummy Grey Kangaroo. Hoppity looked around the tranquil scenery and realised his mother was right. It had all been a big dream. Hmm, typical, Hoppity thought to himself. Nothing ever exciting happens to me. This little clearing is so boring. We're all hidden by the trees. I've never even seen a human. I wonder what they really look like. I bet they have exciting lives. I'd love to see the towns where they live. 
Hoppity continued to daydream all day, only pausing to eat with his parents. I wonder what it would be like, he kept thinking. He was especially interested to see children and maybe even play with them. Hmm, if only my life wasn't so dull. If only I could have a great adventure and do exciting things. Hoppity dreamt of faraway lands of danger and excitement. He pictured himself as the hero and a great leader. He let his imagination run wild and he was never content to just sit and relax like the other bushland creatures. One day, Hoppity decided that he could wait no longer. He was determined that for the rest of his life, he was going to have one big adventure and that he was going to leave his home in the little clearing near the jelly bean pool in search of excitement. Hoppity was going to go to town. Hoppity didn't want to scare his parents, so he decided not to mention it to them. He packed his bag and got all ready so he could creep out early the next morning. He went to sleep extra early to make sure he would be ready for a big adventure when he awoke. At first light, even before the birds had started chirping, Hoppity, the little grey kangaroo, was well on his way out of the clearing toward a big adventure. With his pack on his back, he bounded as quietly as he could through the bush, swishing trees and bushes out of his face and thumping his tail gently on the ground. After many hours of searching throughout the bushland, a human was still nowhere to be seen, and an adventure seemed almost out of reach. Hoppity continued to press on, further and further into the dense bushland, and further away from his familiar home, friends and parents. Hoppity eventually grew so tired that he had to stop and spend the night beneath unfamiliar trees. He curled up into a ball, closed his eyes tight, and fell into a deep sleep, crowded with more adventurous dreams. When Hoppity awoke, he had completely forgotten where he was or which direction he'd come from. He rubbed his eyes and slowly gazed around him. Oh dear, he thought, and then remembered that this was the beginning of his big fun adventure. He rubbed his eyes once more, hoping it would help him remember which direction he was going in. But unfortunately, the bush still looked the same in all directions. He hopped up, put his pack back on his back and set off into the bush. Hmm, he thought. Maybe I'll go right. That seems logical. Although in fact, he had no idea at all where that would take him. Hoppity took off through the bushes, past the ferns and over the rocks in leaps and bounds, smiling all the way. Before too long, he came to a stream, but he only stopped long enough for a quick drink and didn't even notice the beautiful butterflies or dragonflies dancing across the surface. Onward, onward, in search of adventure and humans. Unfortunately, Hoppity had to spend the second night of his search in the bushland once more. But it was to be on the third day of his trip that he would finally see some new sights. Once again, Hoppity awoke in the unfamiliar bushland, not knowing from where he'd come or which way he was heading got up quickly and prepared himself for another day's travel, when in the distance he caught sight of a shiny, flashing object. The sunlight was reflecting a white glow of something just over the hill. Excitedly, Hoppity bounded toward the light, hoping it would be a town full of people. But as he approached, he realised it was far too small to be anything important, and probably nothing at all. He was right. 
The light had come from a small glass bottle, but at least that was a sign that humans had been there and would not be too far away. There was a steep hill in front of him and he hurried to the top to see what he might find on the other side. As he reached the top and looked over to the other side, he saw an amazing sight. Humans everywhere. He was sure that's what they were, all covered up in clothes and hats. They were little children, all running and jumping and playing all sorts of games. Hoppity could not believe his eyes. This was what real adventures were made of. He sat down for a long while, just watching these funny creatures playing together in the sun. Suddenly a bell rang, and all the children disappeared into buildings. Did I scare them? Hoppity wondered to himself. Where had they all gone? Are they hiding from me? Hoppity did not realise that the children had not seen him at all. It was just that the school bell had rung and everyone was now back in class. Hoppity waited and waited. Finally, the bell rang again and the children came running out of buildings but quickly disappeared into cars and buses. Hoppity didn't understand and he sat at the top of the hill and cried and felt very sorry for himself, for he thought they had all run away from him. Hoppity curled himself up in a ball and fell asleep. The next day, he awoke to the sound of a school bell once more, and children rushing from near and far into the building. Hoppity watched wide-eyed as the children disappeared, and finally realised that it had not been his fault at all. The bell rang again some time later in the day and all the children reappeared to play outside. As Hoppity watched, his courage and curiosity grew until finally he could wait no longer and raced down the hill to join in with the children. As he neared the bottom of the hill, the children began to look up. Ah! screamed a little girl. It's coming straight for me! Help! This started everyone off, and by the time Hoppity was at the bottom of the hill, the playground was empty, all except for one little girl called Grace. Hoppity stopped and looked around. Immediately, a tear came to his eye, and he realised that he'd scared the children away. I, I only wanted to play, Hoppity cried to himself. Cheer up, the little voice came behind him. I'll play with you. Who said that? Hoppity quickly asked and turned around to see a pretty little girl in a bright yellow dress. I did, said Grace quietly. Don't cry, I'll be your friend. Thank you, little girl, said Hoppity. My name is Hoppity and, and I come from the bushland. Nice to meet you, Hoppity said Grace. My name is Grace and I live in a house not far from here. Why is everybody else scared of me, Grace? I didn't want to scare them, said Hoppity. I know, said Grace, but you did come down the hill very fast. Oh, I see, said Hoppity, not really understanding what he'd done. Hoppity and Grace talked for a while until Grace said she had to go home but hoped to see him again some day. Hoppity went to sleep that night under a lamp post by the school. His adventures had just begun and he was so glad that he'd found a friend. The next day came and went and Hoppity saw no sign of Grace anywhere. He waited all day at Grace's school, but no bells rang and no children came. By the time it was getting dark, Hoppity was feeling very sad. He didn't know the reason why the school was empty because he didn't realise that it was a Saturday and little boys and girls don't go to school on Saturdays or Sundays. By lunchtime on Saturday, Hoppity had still not seen any children and so he decided it was time to venture further into town. Carefully, he hopped along the road to the shops hiding behind lampposts, telegraph poles, 
garbage bins, and the occasional tree. He saw many people going into a variety of different shops and coming out with lots of interesting books to read and toys for the children. Hoppity was getting very hungry and thirsty and didn't know where to look for food. Back at his home, he could find his dinner on the nearest bush or shrub. He realised that here, people bought their food. Hoppity found this very strange and giggled to himself. What funny creatures, Hoppity thought to himself. He looked around and decided that if he was going to eat, he would have to go into the shops like all the other humans. All he wanted were some juicy, fresh leaves. Surely he could find them. But Hoppity didn't realise that humans do not eat the same things as little grey kangaroos do. Hoppity looked into the window of the first shop. Mm, no food in there, Hoppity said to himself and travelled along until he found a shop that looked like it might sell leaves. A flower shop. Hmm, he thought. Hmm, just smell the roses. Hmm. He hopped around in search of leaves. Ah, wonderful, dinner, he thought as he spotted a bunch of native Australian flowers and leaves and bounded up toward them. He smelled the familiar bush smell and felt like he was back at home in the clearing with Mummy and Daddy Grey Kangaroo. He was awakened from his short daydream by a high-pitched squeal. Eek! Squealed a plump lady in a red dress. Help! There's a kangaroo in the shop! All the people in the shop stopped what they were doing and turned around to peer at Hoppity. They all froze. Oh my goodness! cried the elderly shopkeeper, pointing at Hoppity. Wherever did he come from? The plump lady started squealing again, and Hoppity knew that he had better get out of the flower shop as quickly as he could. He bent over and ate all the sweet, juicy leaves, turned around, and with one almighty jump, he was out of the shop and back on the footpath outside. That was scary! Hoppity thought to himself. Mm, but at least my tummy's full. Hoppity found a tap that was dripping on the side of the road and lapped up a puddle of water that had formed at the bottom. Just as he had finished, he raised his head. Beep, 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 came a loud noise that rushed past him. Oh my goodness, thought Hoppity. What is that? Hoppity had never seen a car before and it gave him such a fright when another car went past beeping. What's going on? Hoppity asked himself. Finally he remembered what his old uncle had told him about the way humans travel in cars, on roads, and that they go very fast. Hoppity realised that he must be very careful not to get in front of one of these cars or he might get hit. Hoppity stayed well away from the road and all the dangerous cars. He continued along his way until he heard another sound. Boom! It was thunder overhead. The sky was completely cloudy and they were in for a big thunderstorm. Crack! went the thunder and lightning flashed across the sky. All the townspeople hurried off to the safety of their homes, leaving Hoppity all alone on the treeless street. Hoppity knew how to hide from the storm when he was at home. But amongst all these buildings and concrete, he didn't know what to do. He couldn't go into anybody's house because everybody seemed scared of him and no one wanted him in the shops. Hoppity decided to run. He bounded and leaped as fast as he could past the shops, the school and all the houses until everything was behind him. He found himself on a farm with green grassy paddocks and an old barn at the far side. He hopped up to the old barn and creaked open the door. Inside, he found many animals, all cosily tucked away from the wind, rain, thunder and lightning. There was warm straw on the ground and curled up in the separate pens were Mr and Mrs Pig and their six piglets, 
family of many chickens, two black, strong horses, Mr. and Mrs. Cow and their son Josie, and many little mice that ran along the rafters overhead. What a big, happy family, thought Hoppity. Everyone looks so content. All the animals turned around lazily to look at Hoppity. They had never seen a little grey kangaroo before, but they welcomed him because they knew he was a friend. Hoppity curled up amongst the other animals and felt very happy indeed. The animals talked together all night about the differences between the town, the farm and the bushland. The farmyard animals asked Hoppity many questions about his home and his family, but they had never met anyone who came from the bush. They all chatted away until their weary heads could no longer stay up, and they all fell into a deep, peaceful sleep. Hoppity was rudely awoken the next morning by a big, bossy farmer poking him in the back. Hey, hey you, he shouted. What's the meaning of this? Who said you could sleep in my nice, warm barn? Hoppity didn't know what to do, so he pretended he was still asleep. Hey, I'm talking to you, kangaroo, continued the farmer, poking him in the back. Eventually, Hoppity could take no more and rose slowly to his feet. The farmer continued shouting until all the farmyard animals sat up wide awake around Hoppity. You don't belong here. You belong in the zoo, shouted the farmer. Hold him down, Johnny. I'll be back in a minute, the farmer said to his son and disappeared out the door. Johnny did as his father asked, but he held down Hoppity so tightly that it hurt his arm. Hoppity closed his eyes and tried to ignore the pain as the farmyard animals around him watched in fear. The farmer returned with a big brown sack and carefully approached Hoppity. Hoppity had no idea what was going on. These humans were such strange creatures. Hoppity realised too late what the farmer was trying to do and had no time to struggle as the big brown sack came over his head, blocking out all the light. The sack went all the way over his body, feet and even his tail. Hoppity tried to kick and kick, but the farmer was too strong for the little grey kangaroo. The big bossy farmer threw the sack over his shoulder and marched out of the barn with Hoppity hanging upside down in the big brown sack. The farmyard animals looked at each other helplessly. They each knew that they should do something, but they did not know what. They all sat quietly and sobbed for their new friend, poor little Hoppity. Hoppity was thrown around in the darkness of the sack for hours and hours, bumping and crashing up and down. The pain and confusion was almost unbearable, and Hoppity gave up fighting after a while and closed his eyes once more to pretend he was back in his little clearing. With a loud thud, Hoppity was dropped on the ground, and the big brown sack was removed. Hoppity blinked his eyes and tried to adjust them to the light all around him. He rubbed his eyes for a while, and everything finally came into focus. Hoppity found himself staring through great iron bars, and many people on the other side of the bars staring back at him and trying to touch his soft grey fur. Hoppity stepped back from the bars and looked around him. Hoppity was in the zoo. The floor underneath him was cold, hard cement, and the walls were the same, with bars at the front to let people stare at him. Hoppity felt all alone in the little cage, despite the people in front of him. He longed for home and shrubs and bushes. He longed for the familiar sounds of the bushland. And most of all, he longed to be safe in the arms of his mummy and daddy grey kangaroo. The days passed slowly, and Hoppity began to think that he didn't have a friend in the world. People came and went every day, peering at him from the outside 
and lifting their children up to try and pat him. The zookeeper gave him little food or water and Hoppity began to feel sick and very tired. At night he dreamt that he would escape the next morning he awoke to find himself still locked in the zoo. After many days in his cage, suddenly Hoppity saw a pretty little girl with a yellow dress. She stepped up among all the other people and looked through the bars at the little grey kangaroo. Hoppity, she cried, are you all right? Hoppity rushed towards the bars. Grace, it's you! He cried out in joy. Oh, I'm so happy to see you. Grace reached through the bars and stroked Hoppity's fur with her little hand. I'm so unhappy, Grace, Hoppity confessed. They locked me up in here and it's awful. I'll help you get out of here and get back to the bushland where you belong, said Grace. I'll come back tonight and save you. Hoppity waited impatiently all afternoon until he heard Grace's soft little footprints. She went straight to the great iron door and began unlocking the padlock with a big fat key. Where did you get that key from? asked Hoppity in amazement. There's no time for talking. Let's get you out of here, she said. In no time at all, the two friends were standing side by side outside the zoo. I can't believe it, said Hoppity. You saved my life. Thank you so much. He reached over and gave Grace a big hug. Bye, Hoppity, and good luck, said Grace. Bye, Grace, and thank you for being my friend, said Hoppity. Hoppity bounded away into the bush. Hoppity's long journey home was over very quickly, and soon enough, he was back amongst familiar things. Hoppity's parents were so happy to see him, as they had no idea where he had been. Hoppity sat down with his mummy and daddy and told them all about his exciting and scary trip to town. I don't want any more adventures, Hoppity said to his mummy. I'm quite happy to stay here in peaceful, tranquil bushland all the bushland creatures. Going to town was fun, but I'm not going to do it again. With that, Hoppity's mother kissed him on the head and Hoppity fell into a deep, deep, peaceful sleep, dreaming of more adventures to come.